Okay, in this uh, section, we're gonna write our first Python program. It's not gonna be anything super crazy or super um, complicated, but I just really wanna get you started in, in executing and running your program. We're gonna be using Visual Studio Code um, and learning how to kind of execute from, from that area right there. Um, so you're gonna need to make sure that you've got um, your uh, Anaconda uh, Python installation installed there and also VS Code installed there. Um, I would also recommend that you have your GitHub repository um, created. You can create just a scratch pad um, GitHub repository and start doing that just so you can follow along with uh, those things. Um, if you haven't gotten those done, I'm going to put a video link somewhere around here, there, or wherever, I don't know, um, uh, that points to how to install Python, um, Anaconda Python, and also uh, do a GitHub. So let's get started. Let's write our first Python program. So getting started, um, I have uh, just a, a blank repository that's uh, been opened up in, in Visual Studio Code. Um, and, and you can do that by actually, if you open this up um, in your um, uh, GitHub desktop, you can click on open in Visual Studio Code and it automatically pulls this guy up right here. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new file in here. And then we're gonna save this guy as. Um, I'm just gonna call this as scratch, uh, actually, you know what? We're gonna call this hello.py, like this. And we're gonna go over our hello world example. Now we're gonna make it a little bit more complicated and we're gonna say name is equal to, and then enter name here, all right? And then we're gonna do print, F and then quotations, hello, and then brackets, name, and then close everything out. So it should look like this in there. What I want you to do is take this and replace it with your name. So I'm going to just say Kronos Voters because I like to be special in there. Now, we have a fully working Python script. Ta-da, you're a Python programmer. You did it, you're already there. Let's figure out how to run this. In Visual Studio Code, you can do two different ways of, of running this code. The first you can do is by clicking this little play button right here. And what it does is it'll actually pull up a terminal and run this file. So let's go ahead and do that. Now when it, is, it does, it runs this and you can see, ta-da, hello, Kronos Coders. That's right there. Cool, I did that. I'm gonna clear out my um, thing. Now I'm running, I'm running PowerShell, just FYI. If you're using um, command prompt and you need to clear your screen, you might need to do CLS that's in there. Um, if you're using a Mac, um, clear should also work for you as well. Let's make a little bit more changes in here. Let's make this, hello, James Mertz, like that, okay? Um, and what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to open up my terminal here and I'm going to actually close this terminal out, click terminal, then new terminal, and this is going to open it up. Now it's going to open my terminal up in where my repository is. And it just so happens that my repository has um, the, the file that's in there. So if I do um, dir for command, or if I do ls for um, Mac and PowerShell, you're gonna see the contents of that directory. And we can see that hello.py is there. Great. So what we're gonna do then is type in Python and then hello.py. Now, if you push the tab after typing in H-E-L-L -L, and you push tab, It'll auto-complete this, and it does that for most um, most things. PowerShell does this. I'm not sure if Command Prompt does this. Um, and then, obviously, your Bash or your ZSH um, shells will for um, your uh, Mac and Linux systems. So if we do Python space, 
then hello.py and enter this, we can see this got executed. So what's really happening here? Well, the print statement is a function that gets called and it prints whatever is inside of here. Now we're making a little bit of an interesting thing and we're doing an F string and we're inserting the contents of this variable into here. Don't worry about this. We're going to talk about how this all works in further modules, but that's essentially what's happening there. Now, one thing that you do need to realize is when you take a um, file, a Python file, um, it executes from the top line down. And that includes if the file gets imported. So any Python file can be imported. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, let's open up our IPython um, console. So if you type in in the terminal, IPython, I-P-Y-T-H-O-N, and then enter, you're going to see something like this. That's going to say IPython. We're going to clear out our screen using CLS for Windows or clear for Windows, I'm um, sorry, for Mac and Linux. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do import hello. All of a sudden we see, uh-oh, our execution was was executed and done this. I don't really want that to happen when I import a file. And so we get around that by creating our main function. We do that by doing if dunder, which is two underscores, name, then dunder again, or two underscores, is equal to, so two equals, and then the string dunder, so two underscores, main, two underscores again, and then your colon. And then here, any executable code we put in there. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to copy or cut and paste our code here. Make sure our indentation is correct in here. So we need to be indented by four spaces or a single tab character. I will only judge you mildly if you use tab characters. Um, save this file. Let's quit out of, of IPython, clear our screen, and let's run this file. So python hello.py. Same thing happened, we did that. Now let's pull up our IPython console. Let's import the file. So import hello, and now you can see nothing actually got executed. And the way that that works is this check right here. Again, don't worry about the if statement and the double equals here that's going on. That's not really important right now. What is important is that anything that is underneath this statement indented by one line is what gets executed when you run it as a script. When you import it, it doesn't get executed. So that's how you kind of work with it that way that's in there. So this is interesting. We've printed, we've printed out our name. Everybody does that. Let's do something else that's a little bit more interesting in there. I'm going to open up our, my repo for this. And I'm going to go into this um, folder right here, and I'm going to copy and paste this file right here. So this is just a random text in here. So 01 underscore random dot text. And in here, there's a bunch of just random words in there. I believe this is some sh probably story or I'm not quite sure what it was. It was some sort of random thing that I found. What if we did a, a um, word counter? How would we do that? Well, I'm going to cheat a little bit because I did this already for you. I'm going to copy and paste this right here. If you open up 
in the GitHub repo, um, you will be able to, um, in fact, let me show you. If you go to the main GitHub repo under, so here's our main GitHub repo right here under lecture material, 01 event, um, overview of programming, and then writing your first Python script, and then scroll down where it loads all the way to the bottom. Just copy this right here and paste it into right here. Now, you may need to adjust for some uh, indentation. So we're going to highlight these words right here and push the tab key. And that'll push in everything that's working there. Now, once we've done that, what we're going to do is we're going to run this file again. So python hello.py. And we can see that the word in, that the most used word is in, and it appears nine times. So what this does is it reads that file that we have right here. So it reads this file right here over on this side, and it looks to see how many times any word was used in there. And then it tallies that up in there. And once it does, it goes through and it finds the, the word that has the most in there and it prints out to the console what word that is. And in appears in there nine times. And that's what it is. Congratulations. You have made your first Python script. Good job. I'm proud of you. And don't worry about copying and pasting the work. That's okay. Sometimes that's just what as developers we have to do is find somebody else's work and copy and paste it. Just make sure that you attribute it. And so in this case, what you're going to want to do is put a comment using the hashtag here and says created created by and then insert whatever it is, whoever named it. In this case, it's James Mertz. Um, so just be careful about copying code. There might be a copyright behind it. You can't copy stuff that's copyrighted. You have to make sure you have a proper attribution um, for that that's in there. In any case, you've created your first Python script. Hopefully it looks exactly like this and it works perfectly fine. Really proud of you and I'm excited. Finally, we're going to wrap this module up with an understanding of what is configuration management and how to use that. So let's go ahead and learn about that.